Stop, stop. I can't take it anymore. Oh, I do the live one too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit. Stop it now. I'm leaving. Hello and welcome. We are breaking up with our BS, and this is episode number seventy-six. I am Tani Sanabria, and I am JDK Winnikin, trying to get trying comfortable to get in my all seat. comfortable in your seat. Finding it elusive. Okay, well, maybe I'm just excited. You're just gonna be wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That's maybe what, that's what I say to my little grandbaby. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. and he goes, "Any hey, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle." Yeah, but I'll try not to do that. <laughs> It'll be weird. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of energy yes. today. How are you? I am doing well. As always, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's great yeah. to be here. It's fun to chat about whatever all kinds of BS. Absolutely. And we're very, very happy to have you along for the ride, all of you listening out there. <laughs> if you are listening live, good morning. If you are listening to this as a podcast, thank you so much for subscribing and leaving us a review. We really appreciate it. You can also check out video feeds of this podcast at our YouTube channel, Breaking Up With Our BS. You can find our Facebook group of the same name. Tawny has a six-week self-mastery course at unperfectyourself.com. And of course, every second Saturday of the month, we do a free workshop for one hour on Zoom, 9 a.m. Pacific time, where you can come on with us, do some practice, experience some of these things for yourself, and see what happens. Yeah, you can even be laying in your own bed on a Saturday morning. I know. Don't even have to turn your camera on. Right. Exactly. Because it's not like school. Totally not like school. Totally not. Like we don't like school. We we'll, we like school, but not on Saturday mornings. Who likes no, school no. on Saturday mornings? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. But it's good. So <clears throat> join us for any of those. So yeah. Um, yeah, I'm wiggly today. We talked yeah. about all the energy. Last week, we had a lot of energy. Yes. Talking yes. about all the BS stories around getting old. I know. We got pretty amped up. Uh, we we did get pretty amped up. You a little more than me, but um, we <laughs> did get amped up. That's not an age thing, by the way. That's a caffeine <laughs> thing, I think. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, it, it is it is something. That's one of the that's one of the big story mm -hmm. sources. Oh yes, getting old. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it got me thinking. I wonder what the other big ones are. Ooh, okay, we're going to talk about another big one. I don't know. Yeah. Do you have a better idea? No, let's go <laughs> no, let's for go. it. All right. So another big one I'm thinking, I'm just going to say it. And, and I want everybody to pay attention to what feelings come up when I say this word. The news. Ooh, the news. <laughs> oh, I bet there's a lot coming up for a lot of people right now. I can feel it for myself. I have so many questions about the news right now hold on we got it we got to make sure we set parameters because this is a evergreen show right so everything yes. that we're talking about so we don't need to anchor it in anything specific necessarily mm -hmm. i'm just talking generally about the news. the news and maybe it's not so much about the news itself but what comes up for us with the news yeah what draws us to it what repels us from it how do we respond to it how, how do we react to it regardless of what it is Right, regardless of how we feel about the media, regardless of exactly what channels we watch or where we are on the political spectrum, mm -hmm. how do we respond to that? That is seems to me to be a huge BS story source and pretty dominating of our lives uh -huh. in our in today's world because it comes at us. It it like you know punches us in the eye and and clips our head and it curveball here and it just comes at us from all these different places that if and we can get sucked in also mm -hmm. right and so then if we're not really intentional around how much of this and in what ways that we want it to enter our body yeah we can be consumed with stories uh -huh. that might not be super helpful or actually pretty harmful yeah yeah. yeah, I actually think quite harmful, yeah. you know, and, and again, mm -hmm. not around anything specific and not even around, not even to get into questions about what the focus is on the news. It just that type of thing. I think it's worth, you know, if I'm going to put my historian hat on here for a minute, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when, if you were going to get the news for the day, you had two sources, the morning newspaper, and then there was nothing until the evening news. Mm -hmm. And you might have a local half hour, and then the national, Cronkite, Brokaw, whatever. And so there was, that was it. 
and then occasionally, then maybe the special report if something big happened in between. This is pre 24 hour cable news networks, multiple ones, mm -hmm. certainly pre social media, you know, where almost anybody, if they know how to set up a website, can put something on there and call it news, or everybody else is still competing with one another, all the big companies. It's everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. That's way different. Way different. Way different mm -hmm. than the experience that most humanity has had for its existence. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the yes. last 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's from anywhere and everywhere. Uh huh. Meaning it's not, we could be consuming news that has nothing to do with our community mm -hmm. all day long, mm -hmm. all month long. Mm hmm. Right, so things that are so on the other side of the world or something, we, we could be mm -hmm. consuming that. Just like we consume food. Mm -hmm. Like we all, if we consumed food all day, right. we would know that might be trouble, mm -hmm. especially if they're M&Ms, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. So news could be a similar kind of thing if we're consuming it in various forms all day long. It just might not taste as good as M&M's, but. Yeah. No offense, M&M's, by the way. We didn't single you out on purpose. <laughs> no, I just, I yeah, know. I know. They're good. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> but I wouldn't want to eat them all day long. No. And they probably wouldn't recommend it either, but nevertheless, <laughs> no, it's a good point. It's, it's to what degree do, does, that's the thing. There's, there's a story with the news that I've noticed and I've had to actually make choices in my own life about this. The idea that the more we consume, the better off we are. The more we know. Right. Yeah. The better off you are. And the story, the primary BS story that I see there and that I've experienced is the more information I have, the more in control I'll feel or the better, and therefore the better I will feel about what's going on in the world. Or I'll have a better sense of where I stand on something and therefore who's on my side and who's not on my side. And while that certainly is, I think, a seductive element of that. And it doesn't hurt to know where you stand on certain issues. To be feeding ourselves that type of stuff all day long. Or even half the day. Half the day. Or even a quarter of the day. Yeah. And, you know, another story that popped up was to be a good person, I need to be informed. Mm. I hear this okay. also, right? Yeah. That responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, to be an informed person. About what's going on in the news. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, because that leads to better choices or better. Yeah, something. yeah, absolutely. It's really hard for people to explain that when you ask them to dig I know. deeper. Do you ever notice that? I, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This this comes up quite a bit because remember, many of the people I see are have a lot of stress. Yeah, and it's coming from a lot of different sources. Mm -hmm. This being one of those. Mm -hmm. So as we take back our life, sort of and manage our own stress response, we've got to be intentional around what we're going to ingest yeah. into our, take into our body. Yeah. And confronting that, that story that somehow, if you don't know everything there is to know about whatever it is that's quote unquote most important in the world, that somehow you're missing out on something or you're mm -hmm. wasting your life or you're not part of a larger solution to something, to some problem. Uh, I think it's, there's, there's some real dangers there. Yeah. To me, the biggest one is it's real easy to hand over our sense of okayness to things that are external to us. Mm -hmm. Take that out to its extreme and suddenly everybody on the news is going to have a better say over what kind of day I'm going to have than I do. Sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I wake up every day and the first thing I do is pop on the news and have it on and things are too good. There's things out there making me nervous, things out there going on that I don't like. To what degree am I letting that run through the rest of my day? To what degree is it distracting me from the work I have to do or from the conversations that I'm having or just my own sense of my own internal well-being? Why is it that we can find it so easy to let the externals overwhelm our own internal sense of okayness as somehow if our daily lives that we're going through and how we're approaching it internally isn't as important as whatever might be happening in the rest of the world. Well, we, we, when we're little, we're conditioned to look externally. That's true. We're not taught to look internally. And, and then how do we self-regulate? We're taught to look externally and 
manage ourselves in response to what's going on externally, mm-hmm. whether it be the people around us, whether it be the context that we're in, think about mm-hmm. school, whether it be. So we are conditioned that the externals are very important. Yeah, of course. To how we are. We don't learn anywhere that we have this internal uh, uh, space in with which we sh- might want to navigate. Mm-hmm. We ha- forget about learning about how to do it. Right. Right. But you're right. So when things come into the body through exposure, then we, the stress response will kick in. Yeah. And, and then we could be dysregulated the whole day. Mm-hmm based off of something we have zero control over in our lives. Yep. yep. Including the amount it is fed to us mm-hmm. if we sit at the table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because getting back to your thing about needing to be informed all the time, nobody says you need to be sitting out in the sun all the time. It's good to get the vitamin, whatever vitamin comes from sunlight. Is it D? It's D. Is mm-hmm. it D? Thank you. Um, but no, you don't sit out in the sun all day long. You, it's good to get exercise. You don't exercise all day long. Mm-hmm. It's good to eat healthy food. You don't even eat healthy food all day long. No, you'd get full at some point. Yeah. And then it'd be harmful after a while Probably. if you felt that you needed to. So I guess I'm asking that broader question. Why is this exempt? Why is this idea that we have to take more in? And it's not that it needs to be answered. Just let it sit out there. You know, it's so funny that comes up. Not that I'm answering that. I'm letting it sit. But <laughs> I was talking generally speaking. Yeah, That's but just to you. The ones that you, the, the examples you gave first were about the body. Uh-huh. The news is about the thinking space. Yep. But exactly. it impacts the body. Uh-huh. Right? So, so that's where we've sort of been stuck is this mental stuff that can go on all day long mm-hmm. without us taking breaks necessarily. Right. And so that's, and that stresses us out. And then think of what results from that. Anxiety attacks, Mm -hmm. you know, body aches, illnesses, which are not mind space things. Those are actually in, in the body. Yeah. So we're okay with that for whatever reason, you know, or at least we tell ourselves a story or we've never questioned this idea that perhaps we need to keep our consumption of that regulated like we do other things. I mean, to me, and I, it's so weird for me to be saying this because once upon a time in my old life, this was, this was constant. You know, when you, be, when you get a PhD in history, you're reading all the time and you're paying attention to what's happening in the world. And people come to you and ask you, where did this come from? How did this happen? Where did this start? And that's not to say that there isn't value to those things because there is. But what I had to come to terms with was I could not be consuming all of that. And, and digging into all of that all the time. It just was something that I just could not do without adversely affecting my mood, mm-hmm. my energy, my emotional state, my sense of uh, spiritual okayness and a safe and a sense of safety in the world. Mm-hmm. Cause too much of that, you're going to be afraid to leave your own house. Absolutely. N- not just current events, but even reading history all the time. Oh, sure. You know, yeah. it just, it gets overwhelming. And yet, so for me to be able to be saying, eh, I got to leave that stuff alone sometimes is a, definitely a departure from where I used to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm, thank God, much better. It doesn't mean I care about it less. It means I just have it, I think, a little more right-sized for my own health. Sure. I have the philosophy that in most cases, it's not that I don't read any news. I read some news. I'm pretty intentional about where I read news from, mm-hmm. but I read some news. I don't watch it. And, um, I don't get it off social media type stuff, but, um, my philosophy for a long time has been probably 15, 20 years has been, if there's something I need to know, somebody is going to tell me. (laughs) (laughs) You're relying on somebody else's external anxiety. Well, well, when, when, you know, somebody is going, somebody in my circle, I'm going to hear something from somebody in my circle about, Hey, did you hear about this thing? Uh-huh. And I'm going to say to myself, oh, this might sound like it's important. And I'll go find check information about this thing, right? But otherwise, that really keeps some of the 
stuff just coming at me from all different mm-hmm. directions if I let it mm-hmm. at, at bay, because how many people am I going to see in a day? I'm not right. going to have people running up to me in the street telling right. me all of these things. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and so that helps me to feed, to, to, to insulate a little bit mm-hmm. around things that are out of my control. Now, I'm not suggesting that that's what it would work for everybody else, but I know from my own stress response, like that is something mm-hmm. that allows me to keep that at a uh, pretty, um, pretty resilient state there. I think that's the key is, is narrowing it down to whatever a person's resilience is between the overwhelm on one end and putting your head in sand on the other is the resilience in the middle. For me, it looks a little different. I, int- I like to intentionally give myself spaces where I'm going to walk into that knowing that's what I'm going to do. So I read, I read the news. I only read it. I don't watch it mm-hmm. mainly because in my opinion, most televised news now is so much more about prognostication of what's going to happen or yes. what it all means, mm-hmm. which is just a bunch of people talking. Mm-hmm. And if they were held to the standard of needing to be right in order to be on television, none of them would have jobs anymore. Mm-hmm. So if I'm watching the news, it might just be the half, the old half hour broadcast, right? That nobody watches anymore, mm-hmm. you know, boom, boom, boom. But I read it in the morning and in the afternoon. And then I have a couple of um, daily magazines that put forward articles that I will, I will take a look at. And if there's something interesting in them, I'll pick it up. But in some ways it's similar. If something big is going to happen, I'm going to know. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. my phone might, you know, put up a, a blurb an about alert, something, something, an alert, yep. something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to know. Mm-hmm. The idea of the more I learn, the better I'll feel, the more I read about, I've seen the exact opposite mm-hmm. in my own life and in other people around me. Like the more they consume, the more they get lost in it and get disconnected from themselves. Because it's endless. It is. It is endless. Mm-hmm. There is no end. Because as soon as one thing drops off the radar, something else comes in. And in fact, something else will come in and kick something else off. So even the story that you can actually know all the things is BS. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's not even yes. possible. And it's one thing to know a story, what's going on around the world. You knowing, you or I knowing the parameters of what's happening isn't necessarily knowing what the situation is like if you're there. And even if you're there and it's happening, you're the one person experiencing it as you. Mm-hmm. getting a handle on what the actual story is or what is a very, very long and in the end, ultimately impossible yes. enterprise. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and so for, if, you know, for people who get, you know, list, getting anxiety, listening to this, oh, well, what am I supposed to do? How was it? Yeah. <laughs> Start there. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed, what should I do? It's finding that regulation point. I think it's that resilience in the middle. How much can I take in that does not, make the external so dominant over my internals. Mm -hmm. And that also isn't necessarily me having my head in the sand, if that's something that matters to you. Sure. You know, I think that's the challenge. Yeah. That, you know, finding ways to still feel like we're engaged in our lives in a way that feels, uh, um, uh, worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And if you're not experiencing that, then, then that could be a, an alarm that lets you know, okay, I'm cutting some, (laughs) <laughs> something back mm-hmm. that's taking the place of that. Right. We only have so many hours in the day mm-hmm. also. Yeah. Yeah. And giving oneself over to like a <clears throat> cause you believe in or something like that at the expense of your own health or at the expense of everything else is not to me, the longer, more time goes by, the less of a trade off I'm willing to make on that. Mm-hmm. If it's taking something away from my own ability to be comfortable in my own skin and to feel like I'm still growing and I'm still connected to reality, you know, it's not all up to me to fix this one thing or to address this one thing. And I think that's the, there's this urgency to this, like, cause it, the news tells us what's going on, but then there's also this implied and sometimes direct. Therefore, because of this, this is what this means. And this is what it means for you. This is what you're supposed to do, mm-hmm. right? Or do something. Mm-hmm. And yet nobody knows what that is. And it might have nothing to do. Even if you do, it might have nothing to do with what you can do in your own like circle exactly. of the people that you actually share physical space with. Exactly. Right. So much of the time we're taken out of that space mm-hmm. and, and then the relationships that are possible around us, we don't have time for those. Yeah. Which uh, for me is, is, is 
sort of the the saddest thing about it all. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for me, the, the way I come back to that is, is why am I willing to make the external things that are out there more important than what is happening in my own life? Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's a constant working through for mm-hmm. me, you know, cause I want to be caring about the things that are happening. I want to be connected. I want to have opinions on some things. I want to be informed. And I also don't want to get so lost in it that I lose track of who I am and where I am and what I'm doing. And if you're, if anybody listening is like that, I would, I would ask you the same question I asked myself, why am I putting myself in such a lesser spot? Sure. Mm-hmm. compared to knowing all of this. Mm-hmm. For me in the past, sometimes it's been like my own ego. You know, people come, people will come to me with my background and say, where, where's this coming from? I want to be informed in case somebody asks me. The answer. <laughs> you know, yes. The answer. Yes. I want to do that. And then other times it can come from that space of, I'll feel better if I know more. That's a myth. Everything is a trade-off. Totally. Everything. Uh-huh. And, and we've, we've got to understand this. Every choice we make towards one thing is a choice we're making away from another. And until we get clear around that being the reality, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to have a lot more struggles. When we simplify it, like you did, you decided, hey, I am not going to sacrifice myself anymore for knowledge. No. Okay. And you're getting to the gym. You're getting your sleep. Mm-hmm. You're still getting some news. Yeah. I still feel pretty informed. Yeah. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. And I still feel if people ask me my opinion, I'll give it to them. It'll just be like, well, you know, just one person talking. Because in the end, that's all any of us are, is one person one talking. One person talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, it, this, one's a, this one's tricky for people. And it is going to be a constant um, uh, check. Yeah. Right. Because it's not going to stop. No. We're st- we're going to have access. Yeah. This is just the way it's going to be, and we have our lives. And so there's there's always going to be this moving forward. Then sort of like how do I balance those? Mm-hmm. And and what am I noticing in my body when I'm getting too much of this, mm-hmm. too much of that? Mm-hmm. That checking in is going to be an important part of our long term health. Yeah. The, the danger of too much knowledge, I think in that sense, or trying to pack in too much knowledge, particularly from the angle of this will help me feel better. And based on my experience and what I've seen in other people is that it it disconnects from connection to the things that really matter. Even something that's concrete is what's right in front of me. The thing I'm doing or the person that I'm sitting with, right. Or the people that I'm spending time with my own relationship. I'm just not willing to do that anymore. It's not worth it. Because it sacrifices things that I care about. And then if I'm not careful, I'm going to turn around and go one day and go, where did, where did everybody go? Mm-hmm. While I was too busy getting knowledge because somehow I think that's some sort of crusading maneuver to help myself, help the, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's a heavy weight. It is. It is a heavy weight. And so when I was thinking of what those big PS stories are, this was a big one. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I feel like I ripped the can off of the top of a can of worms off and threw them all over the table. That's very mm-hmm. vivid. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, it is, and it's, it's a very singular thing compared to a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. We allow a lot more self-abuse for ourselves, I think, collectively with news than we do anything else. The very things that we allow news to do to ourselves, we would reject if we were talking about some other part of our health. Mm-hmm. What we put in our body how we behave, how we treat it. Yeah. Yeah. What we see comes into the body. What we hear comes into the body. What we read comes into the body a little differently than seeing and hearing. Yeah. But still comes into the body. Mm -hmm. So that exposure, Mm -hmm. and it informs us about who we are, who other people are, it creates memories, it, it has us, you know, it reminds us of conditioned beliefs and ideas. Yep. So you're being in some regard controlled in some of those moments mm-hmm. when that exposure is happening to you. Uh-huh. See that clearly 
mm-hmm. choose wisely. Uh huh. Yeah. And know when to turn it off. Mm-hmm. You know, I suggested to somebody I know one time that, that their, their practice, their habit every day of finishing up their work day, getting, getting something to drink, sitting down, and then the news stays on till nine from five to nine might not be the best way <laughs> to end the day <laughs> going into bed because they're stressed out beyond belief by the end of the day. And if it doesn't feel like stress, it's probably more of the numbing, Mm. right? So you might not feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so worked up, I can't sleep. You might feel just sort of like apathy or numbness or withdrawal or just disconnected. Helplessness. Yeah, and so then you go to sleep, you wake up the next morning, and like for what? World sucks. Right. We're all going to die. Right. Like that kind of sucks to wake up to that. (laughs) Why? Why trade that? Right. Why trade for that? Exactly. Yeah. Because it doesn't have to be that way. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to have your head in the sand no. about mm-hmm. what's going on in the world in order to get there. Mm-mm. Right. It's not one or the other. No. Nope. And boy, I'm worked two weeks in a row. I'm worked up about this. You are. Man. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Got to cut back on the caffeine. Before <laughs> this. Anyway, good stuff though. Hopefully this all resonated for everybody out there. And I'm sure there's lots of opinions on it. We'd love to hear from you. Um, about that, you can come visit our Facebook page. You can interact with us directly. And remember, there's lots of different uh, different avenues you can take a lot of things we're talking about here and put them into practice. Uh, and we'll be back in another week. What do you say? You want to do this again? Sure. We'll come up with some <laughs> some <laughs> other <laughs> hot topic. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yes. Yeah, between now and then. Mm-hmm. Until then, in a week, I am JDK Winnicott. And I'm Tawny Santabria. We'll see you later. All right. Turn off the news, huh? Oh, I do the live ones too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit.